All right, good evening to everyone. Thank you for joining me as I'm giving you some breaking news on Friday the 5th of December 2025. And what has happened is that uh, this is Reuters, which points out that the US Vaccine Committee, the ACIP, scraps the recommendation for hepatitis B shots in newborns. And so this was just pretty recent in the last few hours that this decision was made. And um, it's important to get context on it and what is the relevance. Now, I'm not a vaccine expert, but I do like to reflect on science. And I've learned a lot from the COVID pandemic. And in my view, the way how vaccines were deployed during COVID is an example of how you can create problems by targeting groups that don't need to be targeted. That's the lesson I think that comes out of the pandemic. And so when my eyes were opened in the pandemic, when I saw what happened, one of the questions that had always bugged me then is how could I, from a scientific point of view, justify what the practice is with regards to hepatitis B? And so I'm going to give you some nuance here just so that you understand that practice is very often related to regions and specific unique characteristics of demographics. And if you don't take that into consideration, it will then cause a problem. So just some basic things here. Um, the first thing is that hepatitis B is a pretty serious infection. And uh, this is the life cycle of it, so to speak. The hepatitis B virus binds to a receptor this is in hepatocytes in the liver. It then fuses, it releases its, um, its RNA DNA here. This then goes into the nucleus of the cell. It then gets um, permanently, to some degree, placed within the cell that it's, it, it infects. This is part of the problem. It is then a permanent part of the body unless the immune system can destroy all the cells that have it because it integrates into the nucleus with the DNA. And then it will continue to produce particles over and over. And part of the problem with hepatitis B is that because it impacts on the liver, and the liver generally has to be able to tolerate a lot of things, so it doesn't want to become too immune activated, it then gets more difficult for the immune system to get rid of infected cells without triggering problems with how the liver functions. So this is why hepatitis B has always been a pretty serious issue. Now, when it comes to how you apply the hepatitis B vaccine, it's important to recognize that it's not that it's inappropriate. The question is where and when. And so what you then have to think about is, well, where do you have hepatitis B circulating avidly in the world? And when we look at the global prevalence of hepatitis B, you can see that in sub-Saharan Africa, it's very high, 6 to 12% of the population. Similarly, in the Amazon Basin, 8 to 12%. In East Asia, Western Pacific, 5 to 10%. Central Asia, 3 to 8%. The Middle East, 2 to 6%. And critically, what you have to look at is Western Europe, North America. It's less than 1%. So this is very relevant. It's that and the truth is, is that you can't treat all things the same. So we are now having a situation where the U.S. has made a decision, and I can guarantee you that a lot of people are upset um, by it, including the pharmaceutical industry, Merck. They're deeply concerned about the ACIP's vote to modify longstanding hepatitis B birth dose recommendations. You have as well um, someone who resigned from the CDC, uh, Dr. Dimitri Delaskis. Um, he says this will signal to clinicians that there's something wrong with the vaccine. There is not, and that there are liability risks. 
That's their concern. There is Michael Ostelholm. There is um, the American Pharmacists Association, who remain steadfast in our commitment to protecting patients across their lifespan. The science is clear. Hepatitis B birth doses save lives, and there is no new ed evidence to justify delay delaying or removing this critical protection. As you can see, a lot of people have been very upset by this decision. And um, this is what they've always done. They don't see a good reason to change it. Why change it now? So when I was thinking about it, my thought was, well, is this the practice in all parts of the first world? Because as we pointed out, in a lot of areas of the world where there is high endemic circulation, the practice of immunizing um, babies at birth could make a lot of sense. Now, he, this is where you have to understand the importance. What has happened is that when they have looked at the science, if a child or a newborn gets infected with hepatitis B, because their immune system is not yet mature, what can then happen is that the virus gets embedded in the liver and the immune system learns to tolerate it, so they'd never clear it. This is different with adults. So in newborns, if they get hepatitis B, I think it's like 90% of them will end up with chronic infection versus only 5% of adults if they get exposed to hepatitis B. So this is part of the reason why there is a concern or there was a concern from the WHO. So that makes perfect sense. However, you then need to think about how high does the virus circulate in a population? And when we look at what Finland did, this is the epidemiology of hepatitis B infection in Finland, implications for immunization policy. So they reviewed it. And I think Finland is one of the few countries in the world that do not do um, um, vaccination at birth. Um, you can uh, kindly correct me if somebody knows differently, but this was up to 2016. Um, when they had done this paper. So up to that time, I don't think they were doing universal um, vaccina vaccination in newborns. But when this paper was done in 2016, um, they essentially came to the conclusion that because of the very low incidence of infection, so as they say, partly due to the fact that hepatitis B infections in neonates and children are very rare, a very limited number of chronic hepatitis B infections occurred uh, within the country. So therefore, even with a targeted immunization program, the incidence of hepatitis B infection still has remained very low because what they had found was that the majority of cases were people who were coming from high endemic regions into Finland. And so in a sense, you can identify, you know, if, if, a pregnant mother um, is from sub-Saharan um, Africa, you can then screen for hepatitis B. And if there is still a concern, you may then choose to use targeted vaccination for that baby to reduce the risk. And this is the point that I think has come out very clearly out of the COVID pandemic, is that all interventions in medicine are about risk-benefit. And I have never liked the principle that there is any therapy or any action that doesn't have risk. You can just do it all the time. Even paracetamol or acetaminophen, depending on where you are in the world, a very simple drug for pain can do serious liver damage if taken in overdose. And so we always have to be aware of the risk-benefit situation. Unless something had changed in the United States, if their prevalence of hepatitis B was rising, they, that could make sense. But even in that context, they should be able to identify demographics that are at high risk. So it's not that you don't do uh, vaccination, it's that you do targeted vaccination. And I think this is probably what the ACIP um, decision is recommending is that they are no longer doing it as a routine for all children. So they voted to remove the broad recommendation on all newborns in the US to receive a hepatitis B vaccine. And 
that to me makes scientific sense in low endemic regions where the risk of hepatitis is low and they have adequate screening procedures in place to identify mothers and they should therefore be able to do targeted vaccination to try and keep it under control. One of the challenges that are going to come in the next few years is that because of the policy that occurred with COVID in the COVID pandemic, it has caused many people to review the way how decisions are made around vaccines. And this is something that has been brought on public health because of the decisions by public health, and they need to own that. They cannot pretend that it isn't because of what happened in the COVID pandemic, why all of these things are actually happening. RFK is in position largely because of the failure of public health in the COVID-19 pandemic to advocate adequately for the population to be scientifically driven for targeted vaccination. And all of that has now come to a head where everything is being reviewed, and I think probably rightly so, because what has happened is it has demonstrated that those people who were making these decisions, because if they were involved in the decisions with the COVID-19 um, vaccination mandates and so on, it indicates that either they didn't have a grasp of the science or they were not willing to advocate to do the right thing. Either one, in my view, means that they are not ideal to continue to review the best health of the population. So I suspect across the world we're going to see changes. And I think that a lot of it is because of those mistakes. There's still a lot of work to be done. But yes, at least let's get back to the science, even if it is difficult to contemplate. Have a good evening. I hope that is of value to you. A hero, an immune adventure. Humming Heroes, your lyrical guide to the body's defenders. Now on Amazon. Check the links below.